Does your child struggle to sit in a chair? Are they in constant movement? Do they walk on their tippy toes? The real issue might be something no one's ever looked at yet, vision. Not just whether your child can see clearly, but whether their brain and eyes are truly working together. Studies have suggested that up to 71% of autistic children have vision differences. And this is what we're going to break down in today's video. Hi, I'm Dr. Dana Johnson, and over the years of working with families, I've come to realize that vision is essential to functional and intentional movement. Yet when I ask parents, when was the last time that your child had a vision assessment? Most often they look at me and say, never or a long time ago. Now, why is that? Today, we're going to talk about why and what you can do to ensure that your child's vision is working efficiently. In this video, I'm going to explain what functional vision really means, why vision is so critical for intentional movement and daily life, how vision and regulation are connected, and what steps you can take today to get your child the right support. Most of us think that vision is about clarity or visual acuity, meaning can I see things clearly up close and far away? but that's only one small piece of the puzzle. Vision is actually a brain process. It's about how the brain interprets and uses what the eyes take in. Many of the kids that I work with pass standard vision screenings at school or at the pediatrician, but that doesn't mean that their vision is working for them. They may be able to see things clearly, but still struggle with daily tasks or keeping their bodies calm. There may be more going on, but we aren't making the connection to vision. What they may be struggling with is functional vision, meaning how their eyes track, focus, team together, and stay fixed on a target which allows the brain to take in what they're seeing through their eyes. There are a few components to functional vision. One is our ocular motor skills, which is how the eyes move. And secondly, the visual processing skills, which is how the brain interprets what we're seeing based on what's coming in through our eyes. And when those are off, it affects everything, especially motor coordination. We rely heavily on our ocular motor skills, which are the muscles that help our eyes move, look at an object, or shift focus to do things throughout the day, even without thinking about it. Those with whole body apraxia can have challenges with ocular motor skills because the tiny muscles that are used to move the eyes are affected by apraxia as well. However, because these muscles are so tiny, the eyes can then fatigue really quickly. It can make it difficult for the eyes to team or work together well, which may cause the vision to be blurry or the eyes aren't able to look at one thing for enough time. This can ultimately make life hard. So what are some of the things that I observe in my clients with vision differences that you may also notice in your child? Difficulty fixating on one thing. So they may have a hard time keeping their eyes on something that you're pointing at, or they can't keep their eyes on their shoes, for example. You've asked them to put them on, but their hands are feeling for it, but they can't get their eyes there. Another thing is rocking while they're seated. Now this can be a regulation thing, but this movement also activates the peripheral vision like the vision that we see from the side, and many of my clients use their peripheral vision more than looking straight on. Something else I see is closing one eye. Sometimes when the eyes don't work together well, they have to compensate by closing one eye and just essentially using one eye. Now this is going to affect our depth perception. So we want to make sure that the eyes can team together. Something else I see are eye turns. So eyes turning in or out can also affect the individual's ability to visually look and fixate on something. Definitely squinting. Squinting can also include fatigue, but all of these things may indicate a vision difficulty. Now here's the good news. There are things that you can do to support ocular motor strength 
and functional vision. Before doing any vision exercises though, it's important to have a full vision assessment done by a qualified developmental optometrist who's familiar with those who have neuromotor disabilities such as non-speaking autism and whole body apraxia. I'm going to talk about how you can find a developmental optometrist in your area at the end of this video, so make sure to stay until then. Now let's talk about regulation. If your child can't sit still, seems impulsive, or is constantly shifting in their seat, this may indicate that they have functional vision issues. Many of my clients struggle with integrating their central or looking at something head on and peripheral vision, meaning what's in our periphery to the side that we're not looking straight on. We use both systems and many of my clients can't do that at the same time. And that means that when they try and focus on something, if you're asking them to look, their body could feel off balance or dysregulated because their visual system can only use one or the other. They can't do both at the same time. They may be more peripheral dominant. They may compensate for this challenge by using their visual system only. And that's where you see that they'll kind of gaze out and look towards the side and they'll do the side eye. Or they, like I said, they may not be able to sit still. So what do we do? Because they move, they shift, they fidget. And it's because this movement reactivates their peripheral vision and helps them feel more regulated. They may also use visual stims to help with regulation as well. Now, this is why vision must be an important conversation about anything related to motor planning. Because when vision is off, the entire sensory and motor system is affected. Now, something that parents often say to me, but my child can't speak. They're a non non-speaker. So how can they have a vision assessment? Well, they can. Your non-speaking child can get a full developmental vision assessment. They don't need to have speech or be verbal to have their vision evaluated. There are developmental optometrists trained to assess vision in toddlers, non-speakers, and individuals with complex motor challenges. Just like we fit toddlers with glasses, they don't have the ability to explain what they're seeing. So there are assessments that can also work with your child. Now, the trick is that you need to find the right provider. What are these providers going to do? Well, they're going to do a full evaluation. They're going to look at things like convergence. Can your child converge and diverge their eyes? Can they their eyes team together? They will also, of course, look at acuity or ensure that they can see clearly. They may suggest therapeutic lenses based on the evaluation. Therapeutic lenses aren't meant to be permanent. They're meant to be able to help the brain process what's coming in through the eyes much more more efficiently. They may also suggest vision therapy. So how do we find a developmental optometrist? Well, here's where I would suggest that you start. Visit the Neurooptometric Rehabilitation Association website, or NORA, N-O-R-A for short. That website I will include in the description below, but it is noravisionrehab.org. Now, when you're there, you can go to find a provider and put in your zip code so that you can look for for providers with the FCOVD credential. Now, this signals advanced training in functional and developmental optometry. So they will have additional training for individuals who have these challenges. But don't stop there. I always suggest to my families to call the office, ask if the provider has experience working with non-speaking individuals or those with motor challenges or whole body apraxia, and definitely trust your gut. If they're open and curious and willing to learn, that's a good sign. If they're dismissive or unsure, then I would keep looking because some assessments may be out of pocket and you don't wanna waste your time or your money, so it's worth worth making sure that the provider is a good fit before you commit. So let's summarize. 
Vision isn't just about seeing clearly. It's about how the brain processes what's coming into it so that we can move our body efficiently and stay regulated. Functional vision challenges can make any focus work difficult and frustrating, not because your child isn't trying, but because their visual system is tired or dysregulated. And even if you don't suspect your child has vision issues, it's important to find someone who can assess them appropriately because this could make such a big difference in their ability to move their body effectively. Now, if this video opened your eyes, no pun intended, to what might be going on with your child, don't wait. Start with a vision evaluation. Do your research, but don't rush into it. Go with your gut. You as the parent or the caregiver know your child the best and you know when it's going to be a right fit. Now make sure to subscribe for more expert insight into whole body apraxia and intentional motor health. Leave a comment below if you've had success with vision therapy or finding a developmental optometrist in your area. We're building a community here, so we want to support one another. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.